Hello everyone, today's video is about growing pains, or as I like to call them, idiopathic nocturnal pains of childhood. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, that is the other name for it though. So I've had this topic to be requested by several people and would like to just share with you some information about it. Like all the other topics, remember that it matters most that you speak to your child's actual pediatrician because every clinical scenario could be different and there may be a clue in yours that would make us more concerned. So if I could ask you a favor, it would help me a lot if you would, if you enjoyed or appreciated this content, if you would give me a like, or if you have a question, just post a comment under this video. And most of all, it would help me so much if you would subscribe. Um, the last video about starting school was very, very well viewed and I'm excited, but it was by all non-subscribers. So please, 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 if you like this content, please subscribe and it'll help me out a lot, thanks. So. So many children have growing pains. I wanna to talk to you about them because I don't want you to miss something more important for which they would need to be seen. So growing pains typically occur at night. They're most common between the ages of three to 12. They can occur in anywhere from 10 to 20% of children. They're usually worse after days of increased activity. Now, the reason it's called idiopathic nocturnal pains of childhood, idiopathic means we don't know what causes it, so the etiology is really unknown. It does happen, you know, ages 3 to 12, certainly children are growing during that time, and that's why we call them growing pains, but there haven't really been any studies to say when there's the most active phase of growing that that's correlated with when they have pains. The history of it is that the child will have episodes, maybe a week, two weeks in which it's a very common complaint, and then they'll go for long periods of time without complaints. So it's a chronic but episodic sort of problem. Most of the time, the pain is in the lower extremities. It is possible for it to be in the arms though, but most all the time it's in the legs. There are some preliminary idea that maybe taking vitamin D could help. This isn't officially confirmed, but that is one of the early thoughts. Otherwise, there's really not a specific treatment other than comfort care, like massage, warm compresses, a heating pad, and certainly ibuprofen. You can have the child lie on their um, back and then put a pillow in the bed and let them put their knees or legs over the pillow to elevate it a little bit. Um, it can really feel better though for you to massage it and they'll appreciate that. But I wanna give you a few red flags, things that we would want you to be seen for. So let's say you are in for growing pains. Most of the time, the workup or evaluation only needs to include a thorough history. That means your pediatrician will be asking you questions about all the symptoms and a thorough physical exam. And if all the clues match for growing pains, it is not necessary to do x-rays or lab work, blood work, or anything, or referral to orthopedist or anything like that. But some things if you notice we would want to see your child much quicker than just for regular growing pains would be if you noticed one individual joint was red, warm to touch, or swollen compared to the other. So if you had a knee that was red hot, puffy, that's different than growing pains. We need to see that. Anytime the pains involve the hip, we need to see that. Growing pains typically are about mid-thigh down. Knees, calves, a little bit of thighs, shins especially, very, very common. It can be on one side or the other or sometimes both at the same time. It can come and go. Maybe they'll have a week of their left knee hurts then a week of their right knee hurts and that's all okay to be within normal growing pains. But hip pain is not okay to be considered typical growing pains. It could be something in younger children called leg calvae perthes, which is an avascular necrosis of the femoral head and could be serious and needs to have an orthopedics referral. Um, if there was an infection in the hip joint, a septic joint, that would be an emergency and they often need surgery. It could be in the teenagers and especially some heavier teens, it could be slipped capital femoral epiphysis or skiffy and that needs an immediate x-ray and referral to orthopedics. So there are some things that really we can't just gloss over and say, oh, it's just growing pains. They could be more serious and need immediate attention. The red, warm, swollen joint, anytime your child has a persistent limp, that's a problem. Now, if they just stub their toe and their toe hurts and they limp around a few minutes and then they're fine, no problem. But if they have a persistent limp and you don't have a reason or a history of trauma to explain it, they do need to be seen. Now, often in those cases, it's something called transient tenosynovitis or toxic transient tenosynovitis of children. And that's when they've had a virus and then post-viral, they can have some joint pain, especially in the legs, sometimes so severe that they don't wanna bear weight on it. But it still needs to be seen so we can make sure that's what it is. So non-weight bearing is always weird. Um, so for growing pains, you should completely expect ages of three to 12, 
nighttime primarily, worse after extremely busy days, no limp, no red warm, swollen joints, able to walk normally. And if that's the case, most all the time you are okay to treat it just with massage, compresses, and ibuprofen. I hope that was helpful, thanks.